Well, hello and good evening. And thank you for joining us for another episode of Progressively Yours Health and Wellness Podcast. I'm Imani. I'm Bernard. And together we're Sankofa Institute for Wellness, in addition to, well, the podcast is part of our institute. And uh, things have been going really, really well for us. I wanted to just, um, before I hand it back over to you, I want to acknowledge Dr. Patricia Rodney. I had the absolute pleasure this past weekend of being in her presence once again. She is the former, well, she's the former wife of Dr. Walter Rodney, who wrote How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. He was definitely a uh, a scholar and a freedom fighter and an influential person um, in Guyana. But anyway, I worked with Dr. Rodney at the Morehouse School of Medicine Master of Public Health Program, where she was at the helm for many, many years. And so um, this was an event honoring the Walter Rodney Foundation and Dr. Patricia Rodney for all of her work over the years. So, um, and then I found out that she listens to the show. So that's part of why I'm doing this, this shout out. In addition to her, there were so many other colleagues and former students and folks. It was just an absolute wonderful pleasure to be in their presence again. So with that, because I didn't want to forget that. Dr. Rodney, if you're listening, thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Bernard. Thank you, Imani. Uh, I'm sure that was a beautiful occasion and uh, you were also featured in terms of having an announcement that you shared at the uh, the, the video oh well, they, right? yeah they well they had just asked for testimonials about yeah. people who'd worked with dr rodney and i was one of them okay very good mm -hmm. uh we always begin our show with a brief meditative moment uh we ask that if you would like to participate it's very short uh, to get us centered so that the heart receive what it is longing for tonight from our special guests. So i like to invite you, if you are seated, if you are, even if you're driving, well, I don't know if you're driving can be listening on the way we uh, uh, broadcast, but if you're sitting. They can. Oh, uh, they can? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they can. Um, take a three breaths as you begin to relax your body. In and out through your nose as we center down three deep and full breaths and just notice your breath and then allow your muscles to begin to relax, your shoulders to drop a minimum of three as I share a few words from Tick Knock. We clear the energy and the space around us so that nothing interferes with what we are to receive that is for our highest good. I find these words to be interesting <clears throat> as we are always referring to energy and vibrations uh, that uh, the ancestor Thich Nhat Hung wrote in his, his book for everyday wisdom, your true home. Uh, number 71, habit energy, habit energy. Habit energy is pushing us. It pushes us to do things without our being aware. Sometimes we do something without knowing we're doing it. Even when we don't want to do something, we still do it. Sometimes we say, quote, I didn't want to do it, but it's stronger than me. It pushed me. So that is a seed, a habit energy, which, which may have come from many generations in the past. We have inherited a lot. With mindfulness, we can become aware of the habit energy that has been passed down to us. 
we might see that our parents or grandparents were also very weak in ways similar to us. We can be aware without judgment that we that our negative habits come from these ancestral roots. We can smile at our shortcomings, at our habit energy. With awareness, we have a choice. We can act another way. We can end the cycle of suffering right now. Habit energy. It is for the ancestors who encourage us to monitor and to know our habits, that we take on those habits that will serve our highest good on the individual level so that we participate in helping to raise the elevations and the spirits and the habit energy to light on the communal level. It is for the ancestors. Ashe. Ashe. Namaste. Namaste. And amen. Amen. You know, it, it, it made me think about um, the habit, habit energy. I mean, there's, there's really good habit energy. And then there's that funky stuff that, <laughs> that we hold on to that is not serving us. So, you know, like overeating or eating the wrong things or not exercising or talking bad about people. Um, and so those kind of habit energies, we need to check ourselves and check them at the door and, and really learn new behaviors because habits, habits are, like they say, habit forming. Once you get in the habit of doing something all the time, it just, it just happens without you really thinking about it consciously. So check your habits, make sure you hold on to the good ones, form new new good ones and and let the others sort of fall off if they're not serving you or the society or your greater good all right so with that just a couple of announcements we are our our, our listenership watch viewership is just growing every day kind of exponentially each week we're seeing more and more people so please 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 Subscribe to our YouTube channel because that's where the numbers really, really count. It's the Progressively Yours Health and Wellness Podcast. And also, if you if you um, subscribe and you check the little bell, you'll get a notice every week about the, uh, the show that's coming up and who our guests will be. So um, also, I've, I've mentioned before that on our, we have a, a card that serves as a website that serves as as a way to introduce ourselves to everybody. It's got a QR code on, it's got a video on it. And so on that card, there's a new, there's a company that we work with that whenever we need changes, they're, they're update, it's updated live on a regular basis. So anyone who has our card, they have the most updated information. They've added a section called Trusted Network. And those are people that we work with, network with, do business with. So we're inviting people to become part of our trusted network. So you can do that by going on our card, which is meetsankofa.com. So there it is on the screen, meetsankofa.com. Scroll down and get more information about the trusted network and how you too can have your own card and become part of the trusted network. The other thing is we've mentioned the red light bed. It is on the way literally on a truck coming from California. We should have it in another day or two. So we're very, very, very excited about being able to offer that to the community. We're going to be signing up people for um, you know, the early adopters who would like to come. They'll have a big discount for their first visit. And then after that, we'll have packages and so forth. But the, the red light, and we've been using a smaller version of a red light system as well as visiting another um, center that has a earlier model of the bed that we're getting. But these beds sort of emulate, they use red and near infrared light and they emulate the, the rays of the sun. They become like nutrition to our bodies. They get right into the cells, help the cells to heal, you know, from, from within the body. And it's very gentle. It's not hot, hot, hot. It's Kind of like warm. It's not UV. It's 
it's not UV, and so it doesn't cause inflammation as you're sitting there um, in it. But anyway, we've got a bed coming. We're going to be in Swanee, Georgia, <clears throat> and um, it's really not that hard to get to from anywhere in Atlanta. So if you're interested in that, why don't you give us a call? We can put you on the list, uh, let you know when it's here, and set up an appointment for you. Call this number, 470-861-7266. Uh, say that again, 470-861-7266, and we'd love to see you there. It has a number of things that come with it. It's not just the bed, so it's it's all about, some people go to red light just to lose weight because that's one of the things that it does, but it does a whole lot more than that. So get in touch with us and you'll learn more about the red light. And um, if, you, if you would like to see what it looks like, just go to trifectorredlight.com. Right. Trifector red light, one word, trifectorredlight.com. Trifecta is T R I F E C T A. Trifectorredlight.com. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. So, with that, we're going to move forward and introduce you to our amazing guest this evening, Dr. Mel J. Cologne. We are so excited about him. He is actually in the wellness center where we will be offering the red light, um, the red light services, red light bed services. And so it'll be nice to see him. We've started seeing him on a regular basis and he's a really amazing, amazing person. Dr. Cologne stands out as a preeminent foot, ankle and leg surgeon renowned for his innovative approach to non-surgical treatments, which is one of the reasons I love this center because most people there are do their best to keep people off of medications and, and out of surgery. Mm -hmm. With the foundation in medicine, medicine built at Temple University's Pennsylvania College of Podiatric Medicine, followed by an extensive training at Lawndale Community Hospital, Dr. Cologne has cultivated a remarkable career. His expertise is bolstered by his role as a diplomat of the American Board of Foot and Ankle Surgery. Throughout his 28-year tenure, he knows what he's talking about, folks. He, he, he's not a newbie at all. He's been an influential figure in medicine circles, sharing his insights through lectures and media appearances and contributing significantly to the field of podiatry. His leadership extends into the community involvement into his community involvement, including significant positions within the health care of the World Chamber of Commerce and the Kiwanis Club of East Cobb, Georgia. On a personal level, Dr. Cologne's life is enriched by his family, including his wife, his lovely wife, Moon, two daughters and eight grandchildren, showcasing a vibrant personal life that complements his professional dedication. Known for his holistic lifestyle, Dr. Cologne is a pro proponent of the organic Mediterranean diet, regular meditation, and an active regimen that underscores his philosophy of integrating imagination and creativity for innovation. His commitment to health extends beyond his practice as he embodies the principles of precision health and wellness, which is the name of the center, the Wellness Center, Dr. Cologne's approach to patient care is not just about treating conditions, but improving his patient's overall quality of life, making him a distinguished figure in both his professional and community life. And I'd like everyone to give Dr. Cologne a big, big welcome. Come on up to the stage, Dr. Cologne. How are you? I'm one happy man. Thank you so much. It's a delight and a pleasure to be here. Oh, good. Thank you. We're well, honored that you are here, sir. We're mm -hmm. honored that you are here. Thank yeah. you. And we love the things that you stand for. They're so consistent with the things that we hold, we hold um, important in our lives. It's not just about work. It's also about family. Um, you know, we've got children and grandchildren between us. We're newlyweds, so <laughs> so we've got two sets, but that's okay. They're all, you know, getting to know each other, and that's a beautiful thing. Well, that's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Dr. Clone, we always like, I like to begin, we, uh, 
before we get into the the uh, part of the conversation regarding uh, your uh, the work that you are doing, uh, tell us, the audience, uh, a little bit about yourself, but primarily, initially, uh, some of the stories that come to mind when you were between birth and 12 mm -hmm. years of age. What, what, what comes to mind about that contributes or has a share in who you are? Well, let's see. That's an excellent question. So from the, time, from the time I was born until I was 12 years old, is that correct? That is correct. What, what comes up? <laughs> I think I think uh, I grew up at a time where uh, they didn't use the word uh, ADD, you know, all that. Uh, I, they said I was wild. They, used the word. <laughs> they said I was wild. So I was I was very high energy, a little bit too high energy for my parents, uh, which I feel a little bad about. But I never got into any kind of trouble or anything like that. But I was just a handful to. And so, you know, I just grew up in a, a house where music was very important. My father was an amateur singer. Okay. He got up on the stage and sang. And we had a lot of music in the house from different cultures. And, um, you know, just, just having a lot of friends. And uh, I really enjoy nature. I did as a kid, hiking and uh, sailing and things like that. And... Um, just really how important our whole extended family was getting together with family quite a bit. Nice. Where did you grow up, Dr. Colon? I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, where we say, forget about it, get out of here. What are you, nuts? <laughs> forget about it. I, <laughs> forget I, about it. So yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. All right, I lived in Brooklyn for two years and then my parents moved to New Rochelle. They figured they'd keep us out of trouble. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm a native New Yorker. It doesn't doesn't go away, right? Good. I love it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Do you have siblings? Yeah, I have an older brother who's also a uh, board certified foot and leg surgeon podiatrist. He's retired. He lives in Naples, Florida, and I have a younger sister who still never left Brooklyn. She's in Brooklyn, wow. and he's very loyal to her Brooklyn roots. And she's a licensed professional counselor. Nice. Mm. Wonderful. So, Dr. Colon, growing up, uh, as you look back, in addition to your parents, and you did mention the extended family, uh, who would you say was one person that was inspirational in your journey uh, to where you are today? You know what? I would, I would say that I had a job uh, after school uh i delivered flowers and mm -hmm. then and uh, then later i became a floral designer which frankly was a great way to meet girls you know ah. flowers and so um the uh owner his name was irving uh irving was a tremendous um mentor to me an inspiration to me and i think about him every week of my life i think about him and he was just just, you know, just like a sunshine. He was, he was like sunshine and very inspirational. That's nice. I find that people who, you know, that, that doesn't re really meet the definition of a gardener, but people who work with the earth and with plants and with flowers, there's just something so special about them. You know, it's like they're, it's like they're tuned in at a diff different frequency or something, you know, and it just- And, and to this day, I love flowers. Uh, my wife is Korean, and she likes flowers too, but I would say I like it even more, so I tend to bring home flowers. Oh, that's so And nice. I still like to arrange the flowers. I like all the colors, and especially exotic flowers from, you know, like from the, the Southeast Asia and, you know, other places like that. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. So how did you, Dr. Cologne, how did you get... Um, Tell us a little bit about your journey to med school and to and then your specialty in, in ankle and foot and leg work. <laughs> well, when people ask me, how did I become a podiatrist, a foot and leg physician? Mm -hmm. uh, I tell them that 
my brother's feet were bigger. So I followed in his footsteps. <laughs> uh, but the real, but that's just trying to be funny. Mm -hmm. Actually, my feet are bigger than his. <laughs> but uh, I, I kind of really just uh, drifted into it. I wish I could tell you that it was a master plan, but I really just drifted into it. And I was thrilled that that happened. And it opened up so many other doors uh, for healthcare as well. That's wonderful. What kind of, how, tell us a little bit about your journey then. Um, and then we'll get specifically into kind of what you do and, and what makes it different from the other approaches to, um, to podiatry. But tell us a little bit about your your journey over time. You said it, it opened doors for other things related to health. I noticed your diet and, and all of that are, are real, you know, very much holistic and um, good for you. I don't know. I just resonate. I really resonate with anything natural. That's why precision health and wellness that we're all part of their center. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why it really resonates with me. And then that's why when Samantha uh, invited me to move my entire operation uh, into uh, her facility, uh, that's why I, I did it. Uh, but, you know, uh, I would say that one of the things is I just love eating an organic Mediterranean diet, as you mentioned before. I take mm -hmm. a lot of supplements every day. I study the science. I have a lot of hobbies, a lot of hobbies, a lot of interests. But one of those interests is life extension, longevity, anti-aging, okay? Mm -hmm. So when people look at me, they will guess me in my mid-50s or around 60, whatever. But I am 76 years old, wow. 76. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm a walking example of what precision health and wellness could do for other people. So, like I said, I take the supplements. I eat. I eat organic Mediterranean diet. Uh, I meditate twice a day. TM transcendental meditation, mm -hmm. um, and I laugh a lot. And I do a fast uphill, uh, four to seven mile fast uphill walk, about four to seven days a week. Mm -hmm. I climb Kennesaw Mountain, the steep end of Kennesaw Mountain. I play racquetball for hours. I feel the same as I was when I was forty three. I basically feel the same. My blood work is a blood work of a 25 year old. So mm -hmm. I intend to be here a long, long time. And that's why I was so taken by Precision Health and Wellness because all their stem cell and all their therapies, which is cutting edge, uh, mm -hmm. which is safe, safety comes first, uh, but also not only safe, but effective. Uh, I just resonated with that. And, um, you know, so that's why and I study all different forms of healthcare, and you're right. I don't, I don't just take care of the foot. I really, it's very important that everybody takes care of the total person, the total body, um, mind, and uh, soul, and uh, and and spirit. Mm -hmm. it's so true. And I, I have been finding that you know, as the more time I spend at the uh, at Precision. Um, that that's kind of a general theme of people there in terms of holistic health and wellness. And so, you know, I mean, what we what we present to folks is a consistent package, consistent message, you know, as they go and meet the different practitioners there and service providers. It's it's um, it really is about helping the whole body, which is which is good. And, and can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you remember the comedian? Rodney Dangerfield. Yes, oh, yeah. yes. Absolutely. He always said, I get no respect, okay? Right. Well, <laughs> well the foot, I wrote an article, because mm -hmm. uh, I've been interviewed on TV, radio, and newspapers and magazines. I wrote an article called, The Foot is the Rodney Dangerfield of the Human Body. It gets no respect. So wow. the foot is the number one most neglected part of the human body, most ignored, most misunderstood, most misdiagnosed and most mistreated part of the human body. And so therefore, there's so many people, because the foot is covered up with socks and shoes. People don't talk about it. People suffer. Like you talked about having habits that they need to get out of at the beginning, which mm -hmm. by the way, I enjoyed your comments about that. So thank you for that. That was good. I had some, I had some, I had some takeaway for me personally there. Uh, but the foot, is 
by far, no contest, the most neglected part of the human body. Mm-hmm. And there's so much that can be done, yet there are these myths or fallacies about the foot. For example, people think there's nothing you could do about a foot problem. They people really believe that. And I haven't found one foot problem we can't greatly help or eliminate, okay? Um, and so there's 26 bones, 107 ligaments, 19 muscles, 33 joints, and 250,000 sweat glands in every foot. Wow. The foot is called upon to carry, balance, and support the entire body. We walk generally about 100,000 miles in a lifetime, and yet people just neglect their feet. So there's a lot of special things that I do for the foot. Um, that That's why I say practicing as a healthcare provider, doctor or, or nurse practitioner or any, any kind of healthcare provider is a science, but it's also an art, it's creative. Mm-hmm. So a lot of what I've done for peripheral neuropathy, arthritis, uh, which I could go into, uh, is unique and creative. That's good. Tell us uh, some habits uh, that we can create for our feet. Some habits would be to always um, do not wear the same shoes every day. Okay, if you wear the same shoes every day, then you, and you sweat a lot in your feet with socks, and that's a lot of times what causes these fungal, really thick, ugly fungal toenails which we've come up with a way, I have come up with a way to treat where 95 to 98% of the time we could get rid of that permanently. Um, But we tell them, don't wear the same shoes every day. Change your socks. If you can, bring an extra pair of socks to work. Change your socks two, three times a day. And don't ever wear your shoes twice in the same day. When you take a shower or a bath, clean between the toes. A lot of people don't do that. You'd be surprised. <laughs> They're not thinking about that. You talked about that word habits. Get out of certain habits, okay? So mm-hmm. they need to get into a habit of taking care of their feet. You know, dentists have great public relations, really great. They tell you to come every six months mm-hmm. and to get your feet, to get your cleanings and to get, get examined. But people should go to a podiatrist at least once a year, or let's say even every other year at, at minimum, okay? So there are certain habits people should adapt about feet and about shoes and socks. And uh, also, if you think about it, the foot, feet are the foundation to our body. All our weight goes on our feet. So when you take care of a problem, let's say over here on your cheek or on your elbow, and then that's it. But when you take care of a problem on the foot, Think about it. They're putting weight on their foot after you treat the foot. Mm -hmm. So it's a very unique part of the body because it's weight bearing. All your weight goes on your feet. I compare it to a house or a building. First thing you put in the ground when you build a house is the foundation. Foundation. If the foundation isn't right, then everything above it won't be right. You'll see cracks in the walls. Same Mm -hmm. thing with a car. When you drive a car with your wheels out of alignment, your tires wear out. So that's why a lot of times people are walking around with flat feet, Flat feet or too high an arch can cause corns, calluses, bunions, heel spurs, uh, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, or even um, knee pain, hip pain, back pain, and neck pain. So it's very important if people have flat feet or too high an arch, we can make orthotics that go on their shoes, uh, which are totally comfortable, just like these glasses I have on our prescription. Uh, Same thing for orthotics, they're totally comfortable. Not everyone needs them, but probably about 70 to 80% of all people need orthotics. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I'll share a story with you because I always think about this when I think about the feet. There was a gentleman who was, um, when I first learned of him, he was well into his hundreds, maybe 104, 105. I think he was around 116 when he passed. But a gentleman, he was from Brazil, but he grew up in New York, uh, Lapaldo. Hmm. I'm sorry, because I, I, I don't want to say the wrong name, but um, if you look up Centurion, he, he probably pops up in the in the um, feed. But he said people, people would always ask him what he attributed to his long life. 
And in addition to eating the right way and, you know, kind of keeping his stress down, he said every night he would soak his feet with a little bit of Castile water, a little bit of Castile soap in warm water, and then rub his feet down with olive oil. And a few times I heard him speak, he said, and don't miss a night. You have to do it every night. You know, his father was a doctor and, and um, you know, he learned a lot from him as well. But he said, the feet are the most important things and you have to take care of them. And I, I just loved him. He was he was such a an amazing person. I mean, he looked good well into his, you know, well, well into his hundreds. Um, oh, and there's one more habit I would say people should get out of. Don't be a bathroom surgeon. For example, there are people with ingrown toenails. They'll go in and they'll try to cut that thing out. Yeah. They'll make it worse. They'll end up with an infection. If they're mm -hmm. a diabetic, they very often actually could get an amputation because of that if it's mm -hmm. not treated in time. Wow. So we came up with, I came, I took the very standard uh, ingrown nail procedure that all podiatrists do, and they're all excellent physicians. And what I did is I modified it. I, I used some creativity in an innovation. So now that way is 100% effective. I, I would give 100% guarantee to anyone that ever comes to me with an ingrown nail toenail that that is the last time they'll have it, okay? And they won't have any pain when I numb it up or even after the numbness wears off. So we could get rid of ingrown toenails uh, and we have 100% results on that. On fungal toenails, 95 to 98% success. That's amazing. That's good. I mean, when you go to the nail salon, you know, a lot of women go, and men too, go to the nail salon and, and get um, pedicures. And it's just a, a common thing for them to, to dig down there for the ingrown toenail and, you know, kind of pull it down. And next time you go, they do the same thing. So I'm like, you get rid of it for, for good? <laughs> That's... Uh I get, listen, I treat people the way I want to be treated. I don't want to have to go back, go back, go back, go back. Financially, mm -hmm. that's bad, let alone the money part's bad. But who wants to keep having treatment for something I could get rid of in one visit? Done. Finished. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I think that, that yeah, that is that is really unique. Because like I said, they, they just start digging in your toes. Every time you go looking for the ingrown nail and just kind of pulling them down. So yeah, I definitely want to get rid of it forever. I'll be I'll be one of your best clients. Well, Thanks. one of the other things I mentioned was arthritis and peripheral neuropathy or nerve pain. Uh, we use almost painless or just about painless uh, injections. You know uh, what we call therapeutic sympathetic nerve blocks mm -hmm. at the level of the ankle or the level of the knee that will totally break the pain cycle, the soreness, the tenderness, the inflammation and increase the blood flow to that part of the body. And very often, all they need is one time, and then sometimes they need orthotics after, and sometimes they need some natural supplements after as well. But my thing is to get people well quickly and keep it from coming back. That's my whole thing. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Yeah, a lot of people uh, suffer from, from gout as well. How do you treat uh, people with gout, which is a cousin to arthritis? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's an excellent, excellent question. Uh, we treat it with the nerve block, okay? We treat it with the nerve block, and that, that flushes the urate. There's these urate crystals, we're usually in the, in the, in the big, big toe joint, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we flush those out. And we also put them on some natural supplements, okay? And uh, normally, and also very important, they change the way they eat. So we'll put them on a diet uh, that will uh, uh, keep them from getting these gout attacks, uh, keep their uric acid levels much lower, which a lot of, by the way, another, another thing that you touched on before about caring about the whole body, not just the foot, is a lot of people don't realize, and that's why this podcast is important. One of, it's one of those pearls of the podcast. And that is your high uric acid doesn't just cause gout. It also can cause heart disease. Mm -hmm. And very few people know that. Most mm -hmm. physicians know that. But the public as a whole, maybe 1% of people out there, 1%, I would be shocked if 2% knew that. So people need to check their uric acid levels not just for uh, propensity to have a gout attack of their foot, 
or their ankle, but also so that they live longer and not have heart disease. What are what are some of the things, the foods that people eat that contribute to gout and and the build up your of your gases? Uh, shellfish, uh, meat, uh, basically those, those and some others. We mm -hmm. we have a whole list, and we we give them a, a list. And what I'll do, I'll send you the list after this, so you can share it with your whole group. Oh sure, thank you. Yeah, I I had uh, many years ago haven't had. Uh, flare up in years since I when I changed my diet, but I had gout flare up, and I remember my first experience. Uh, it woke me up about 4:30, mm -hmm. and and I looked down, and my left toe was pink red and swelling right before my eyes. I didn't know what was mm -hmm. happening at that time. I was uh, chaplain at Grady uh, Hospital. <clears throat> I went down and got diagnosed with gout, and I. At that time, I didn't change the diet. Then uh, I had another flare up on the other big toe, and and so I get to see you when when I'm there at the center because on that toe, right in the joint, it's it's, it's kind of stiff. So you can be one of your patients as well. You can help me out with that when when we get up there. But, it's amazing, um, and it's worth repeating. It's one of the pearls too. It's worth repeating that people actually believe there's nothing they could do about their foot problem. Mm -hmm. or ankle or lower leg pump. And that's just not true. It's not true. So if you want to get the word out about that, people do not have to suffer. They do not have to live with these problems. And yet people actually believe that. Yeah. How's that? Say a little bit about uh, 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 bunions. And as you know, people sometimes have surgery oh, to correct, did, yeah. correct those. Is, is surgery necessary in some cases? Or what has been your experience with? with, with well, bunions? Listen, my whole career has been as a foot and leg surgeon, but the older I get, the more conservative and natural I get, okay? So, yes, there's times that bunions need surgery, but I have come up with creative, innovative ways to sidestep the surgery. Uh, and that's with certain kinds of injections and other natural alternatives. So I've kind of really just become, uh, I, have, I evolved mm -hmm. uh, into someone that's keeping people from needing surgery. Um, and uh, I would say I could probably keep people from needing surgery maybe 95% of the time. Wow. wow that's amazing because I've known so many people who had surgery and I, I had, I guess, you know, the, the pad on the bottom of your foot, I don't know what you call that, but it had just gotten really ridiculous. And, and it was soon after that, that I started soaking my feet and it actually went away. But um, I remember a surgeon had recommended doing surgery um, on my foot. And I'm like, I don't think so. It just, just didn't seem like the right thing to do. Because I've never liked people cutting on me and haven't done it many times. I want, I want to say one other thing, because I don't know who's going to be watching the mm -hmm. podcast. It's certainly not wrong for other podiatrists who do surgery, sure. I'm not saying that's wrong. It's just that, and you know, they're extremely well credentialed, mm -hmm. uh, just like me, board certified and all that. It's just that there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? Mm -hmm. There's more than one way. For example, your red light, which I believe in, um, if that's very, very important, but a lot of people don't know about red light therapy, okay? Just like they don't know about, so therefore it's not, I'm not saying, what other podiatrists or orthopedic surgeons are doing, uh, doing bunion surgery is wrong. I would never say that. Yeah. I would just say that there's options. I like to give people options. Uh, isn't that's a beautiful thing? Yeah. To, it, it's their body. It's not the doctor's body. Mm -hmm. It's the patient's body. So I like to give them options. And even with a fracture, sometimes, Instead of doing, uh, let's say it's a really bad fracture, you need to do an open reduction with screws and plates. Mm -hmm. There are other options where you could use nerve blocks, a cast, a cast for a longer period of time. And then the, the body, and this is a God thing, it is a God thing, or that bone will remodel itself and heal. Okay, it may take a little bit longer. And then they save themselves a surgery, okay? So I'm not saying it is, standard care to do the surgery,
to yeah. fix that open reduction of a, a, a fracture, a really bad fracture. But it's not the only way. And think right. about what yeah. did they do a thousand years ago before there was surgery? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They figured out something to do. That's yeah. right. Less, less invasive. I mean, yeah. I mean, less invasive is is uh, from our perspective. That's that's kind of what we encourage people to at least, like you said, know about options, so that they're just not. Doing yeah, I would never say what other doctors doing are wrong. No. Mm -hmm. All right. all I'm saying is there's other options, and I think that's maybe one of your purposes of your podcast is to let people know natural alternatives. Am I correct? Absolutely. That's, right. That's, That's what right. we do. Yep, yep, yep. You have used that word throughout the show tonight, natural. Uh, from where you are, where you sit, expound, define natural how you're using it, because you've used it over and over and over and over again, and it caught my ear. It keeps coming back to natural. natural. It's coming back yeah. to natural. Well, natural to me means, okay, here's the concern. The concern is not everybody could resonate or feel comfortable taking a medication for a problem, okay? Mm -hmm. Or have a surgery for a problem. When there can be an alternative, I would call it a more natural alternative, where you're using red light therapy, or you're using hyperbaric oxygen, or you're using a supplement, Okay, or many other forms of alternatives. So natural, it maybe is another word for alternative that would be less invasive because uh, medications can have side effects. Now, there's times it has to be a medication. Mm -hmm. So I am totally not against medications or I'm not totally against surgery. I've just evolved into someone who does more natural or more altern alternatives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You seem to take delight and joy in what you are doing and who you are today. Is that right? Thank you. It's a, it's a life accomplishment. It's a passion. It's a joy. I love, the, 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 I love to learn every day. And I read every day. I read for hours every day. And I, and I experience things. And I meet with people. And I laugh a lot. And, uh, and I love helping people. And I know the two of you loved helping people to how I've gotten to know you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. But they say that once, if you're doing what you love doing, it's not work, you know. That's and right. I, you're always smiling when I see you, you know. So it's like well, that, thank <laughs> that's that's a, a real powerful way to be. Didn't that come up last week when we were talking about smiling? Mm -hmm. um, Danielle, who also works at Nutritionist, so she's coming on on board. We but somehow in our discussion we got to the point of the fact that we should be smiling more, laughing more, you know, and enjoying ourselves. And I'd like to say one more thing that when people are watching this podcast, either tonight or or earlier episodes or episodes later, mm -hmm. and they want want to know more about your red light therapy and maybe things that I'm talking about or other or your other guests, mm -hmm. I would encourage them. Come take a tour of the facility. Come in. You feel you will feel the energy. You will feel something very special. I closed my entire operation to come into Precision Health and Wellness wow. because Samantha invited me to do that, which was a pretty bold thing for her to ask me to do. Mm -hmm. But I love it. It's one of the best decisions I've ever made. So on a different level, if anyone is watching this, they should come meet with you guys i could certainly be part of that and anytime they'd want to meet me or all the other all the other healthcare providers and the, you know they don't even necessarily have to become a patient uh right away if they want to just get the tour and just talk a little bit they can do that and it, the location is 1300 peachtree industrial boulevard in swanee um yeah, it's actually 13, yeah, it's Precision Health and Wellness, 1300 Peachtree Industrial Boulevard Suite, Sweet. 1201, right. and that's Swanee, Georgia, 30024, and uh, we're basically there Monday through Friday. Occasionally, we can come in on the weekend as well. And, you know, I, I was just speaking with um, Samantha today. Samantha Chewy is the, the, the director of the Wellness Center. 
of precision. Now, speaking with her about uh, the, the possibility of doing another open house so that people can come back and see the red and, and experience the red light bed as well as meet the other practitioners there. So I think we're going to come up with a date. The bed is literally on its way to Atlanta. And it should One be more thing I'd like to say. Yeah. I'm available because I enjoy talking. I guess you could see that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I have been I have been a paid speaker like for graduations, but but I can talk to a church, a school, a business, an organization or any other location. I don't charge for my time. I just love to educate people, answer their questions. If mm -hmm. they have questions for an hour, I will stay for an hour and answer all their questions. So that's something I'm available to do, uh, especially in the Atlanta metropolitan area. So if anyone ever has that, please reach out to us and we'd be happy to do that. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Thank you. With, with your knowledge and, and expertise, you could literally be charging top dollar um, <laughs> for, you know, and just go for clients that, that have the big bucks. So that's really nice of you to, to offer that. Well, it's part of the fabric of who I am what I represent, what I care about. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's all about helping people. And, uh, you know, if you help people, you're really helping yourself, right? That is, uh, right. that's, that's, yeah. a beautiful, that's what God wants us to do, to, to do right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's, it's living your purpose and your passion. And, um, and one thing I've noticed about that is, is that certainly as I get older, it, it seems almost like people are brought together who, who have, similar passions and, and purposes. So, you know, it, it's no coincidence meeting you and the other people at the Precision uh, Wellness Center because uh, we're all on a mission and that is to, to serve and to help people to, to be healthy, to mind, body, spirit healthy, not just, not just the physical. I did want to ask, and I, we're actually running out of time. I told you this would happen and we'd have to say, we have to have you back and we will. Um, but I did want to ask you about the knees. I used to be a runner when I was young. I mean, literally in high school, I was a runner, but it ran a little bit after that. But, um, as, as a person in my sixties, I'm now experiencing some, you know, some issues with my knees. And so I just wanted, do you do the knees or are you pretty much focused down below the knees? Yeah. I mostly go from below the knee down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Cause I know that's a, that's a real the knee is kind of a gray zone, but uh, I, I focus on the foot, ankle, and lower leg. Okay, okay, that's that's fair. Um, certainly. Do you have any more questions? Uh, not at the second. Not at this second. One might come up. <laughs> <laughs> One might come up in a minute. Okay. Well, we've run out of questions. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, usually yeah. we ask the audience if if they have any questions, anything that they can think of. They all they have to do is type it. I see the whole stream of folks from Facebook, but I know we have people listening on LinkedIn and YouTube as well. So if any of you are trying to um, to get a question to us, feel free, especially the folks on Facebook, because okay. do you accept insurance? That's always a good question. Say, oh, say, what's the question? Do you, do you accept insurance? Uh, well, actually, the whole medical center there, Precision Health and Wellness. They basically, it's just cash credit card. That's the way they do it. Yeah. Uh, so no, no, there is no insurance that is accepted there. They do have, um, and I've, I've uh, spoken with Samantha about this. They do have a couple of options like care credit. And oh, yeah. There's a S H something, HSA, H something um, that people, HCA. HCA that people can use. In other words, it is kind of like a, it's almost like in between insurance because you know, you're know you paying for it, but it allows you to, to make several payments so that you're not coming out of pocket all at once. That's right. So they, they do have that as an right. option. Hey, Josephine, <laughs> I see so many people, our, our loyal folks have been listening. Uh, and that's, that's been wonderful. We appreciate you all. So, uh when you said, Dr. Colleen, um, Colon, about going and having at least a year or every other year uh, a foot exam, what should a person who, who say never done that before, what should they ask when they go see a podiatrist? 
about well, just an exam? No, that's an excellent question. No, basically, if they came in, all they have to do, just like when they go to the dentist, uh, we will examine them, we will tell them, uh, we will watch them walk and watch them bear their weight and, and, and put their joints to a range of motion. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's basically just a comprehensive uh, history examination of their foot, ankle, and lower leg. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Great. Great. And for and example, I diabetics, which is very big, uh, very big problem in this country, mm -hmm. very big in other countries, even more so, um, with unnecessary amputations. Uh, diabetes, now I'm not talking about uh, um, type 1, but type 2 diabetes is, in most cases, totally reversible. Mm -hmm. So that is something that could come in. There'd be other people at uh, Precision Health and Wellness that they could talk to about that. Uh, we and actually the other thing is, it's not like when people think, well, how long? How long am I going to live? You know, am I going to live to my seventies, eighties, nineties? It's mm -hmm. actually, it's. I, I mean, I think we should all be so thankful that here we are in March two twenty twenty four, because if this was March, you know, nineteen hundred or even March two thousand, that'd be a lot different. But right now, there are ways that people can live a lot, lot longer, not pie in the sky, for real. Mm -hmm. And so this is this is really good science, and that's a lot of what uh, Precision Health and Wellness is all about. I intend to be here a long time. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen, uh, but I'm extremely healthy, and I intend, and I just work at it every day. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just, uh, and a lot of people don't have to accept where they are in health right now. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Just like in, 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 in faith, whatever the religion or spirituality is, they, that they can upgrade that as well, right? Same thing with the human body. They don't have to accept, well, I'm this age, so I'm going to live another year or two. No. They actually can explore living a lot longer. Mm -hmm. And healthier, you know. I Healthier. Mm -hmm. So actually, they call it health span. Health span is how healthy they are while they're living, and lifespan is how many years. And mm -hmm. then there's chronological age, which I am 76, mm -hmm. and then I haven't tested it yet, but I will. My biological age might be, you know, 52. It might be 41. Mm -hmm. It might be, you know, 54. I don't know what my biological age is. My chronological age is 76. Mm -hmm. So that's another big thing, and we do all... And also, um, uh, Precision Health and Wellness has so many sophisticated testing that you never had before that mm -hmm. it can be done at this center. Right, right, absolutely. You, you, you've you mentioned several times that you take a lot of supplements. Uh, do you take, when you say you take a lot, can are you taking ones that you've tested and you had blood work returned and said this could be helpful or yeah. Just out of uh, some that, you know, just are good for you overall. Had, it sounds like he's had. Yeah, both. But the answer is both. But what I've done is I've taken supplements that I know, are, let's say, would lower my triglycerides or, you know, um, you know, or my blood sugar or whatever. I've never been a diabetic. But uh, and I noticed if I take the supplements and I and then take blood work, it lowered it and it permanently lowered it. So I know the supplements work. Mm -hmm. It's not pie in the sky. It's not like, you know, snake oil or, you know, uh, some kind of scam or some crazy mm -hmm. thing. No, this is real stuff. And and um, there's tests that they do at Precision Health and Wellness that could tell everyone wh where they're deficient exactly. Mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't done it myself yet. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I've, I'm living a very healthy life. Right. Yeah. And so it's good to take out the guesswork, you know, um, I know which he accuses me of, but I'm getting better. <laughs> He's starting to rub off on me. But um, yeah, it's so important to take what your body really needs, you know, in terms of really supplementing what your body is doing, what your body needs. But it might like vitamin C. Some some of the things our bodies make, but vitamin C our bodies don't make. So we need to take vitamin C. Most people need vitamin D, D3. Yeah, D3. So many people, and that's a big, another important thing, 
I know you've heard about it with, with, uh, with the pandemic, but a lot of people still are deficient in vitamin D, D3, okay. like you said, D is in David, three, uh, unless they go out in the sun every day, um, and, or they're uh, deficient in other things uh, that they should not be deficient in. Like mm -hmm. magnesium is another one, magnesium. Mm -hmm. Or ginkgo, ginkgo is very good for increasing your memory and increasing blood flow. So there's just certain supplements that do certain things right. together, together with eating right and exercising. Mm -hmm. Exercise is very important. Sleep is very important. Mm -hmm. So you got to have, you have to have uh, social relationships, you know, number one, you need to have uh, the, the proper diet, proper exercise, sleep, okay, and supplements. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and, you know, your belief system as well. Right. So we have a, a face as a question is it, re is it recommended to walk barefoot as much as possible versus always wearing shoes? Good question. That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. The answer is a little complicated. Uh, God intend I would say God intended us to walk barefooted, okay? Now, with civilization and glass and rusty to toenail, uh, rusty nails on the street, uh, you know, we, it's kind of difficult sometimes to walk barefooted. Uh, people really run or, or walk barefooted and they built up a lot of callus on the bottom of their foot, then they probably could do that, okay? But I personally don't recommend it. So I, I'm personally maybe a little bit more old school where I do think that you should wear shoes and socks and orthotics if you need the orthotics, which about 70% of people need orthotics. But I'm not I'm not against people walking barefooted. I'm not. Mm -hmm. And I guess I guess walking barefoot sensibly, in other words, in the sand, you know, in the grass, you know, like you said, not on pavement where you're gonna get um where you're gonna well, cut I mean, that's me. I, I I'm kinda I have a little bit of O C D, so I'm not walking around and, and step on glass or step on a rusty nail. And right. end up with all kinds of problems. So I, I mm -hmm. kind of you know think about what I would do. So I kind of that's the kind of advice I give other people. Well, you know, and also you got to be careful uh, walking in those areas, like in grass, because also that can that can enter into the body. We're talking about parasites that, particularly, we don't see cats, but cats are the producers of toxoplasma, which we know is a parasite that enters the brain mm -hmm. but they're in our yards and so even in the grass you got to be careful uh sure. you don't see uh where they urinate or you know and, and so those you know those other elements uh in terms of those type of um, uh, little i call them little beasts entering in our <laughs> body right our feet. The little parasite so, beasts yeah we have oh, one I, minute well, dr Colon. any final words we have yeah, one, one one final word <laughs> For okay. people who are very uh, ambitious about making a lot of money, what I tell them, and that's it's okay, I tell them, but health is wealth. Health is wealth mm -hmm. more than money is wealth. If you don't have your health, what are you going to do with all that money? Okay, so you got to have health. That's the foundation. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the other thing I would say. Health is wealth. It truly is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Colon. We appreciate you coming on with us. It's been a pleasure. We will see Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. And I appreciate everybody. And come see us and get a tour of the, of the facility. Precision Health and Wellness Center. <clears throat> Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Stick around for a minute, Dr. Colon, if you would.